continue with radicals. You got your quiz on Thursday, which will cover, uh, just like with polynomials, uh, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and then also simplifying, which is what we did yesterday. Teachers be tripping. Yeah. Maurice, can you take the, the your butt out there? Man. It's not your birthday yet. You can wear it on your birthday. What? I didn't wear it on my birthday. That's not that's not right though. Mom doesn't wear well, and his birthday's on Sat. His birthday's on a Saturday, so that's why. No, not you. Uh, so today we cover multiplying, which the good news is, if you understood yesterday, should be a very natural transition because it's only one extra step. I mentioned to you yesterday how my first period. I asked them what I thought was a simple question, and it took about 15 minutes to get an answer. Today, it took about maybe five for the same exact question. So, well, we're, so yeah, that is progress. So, let's see how long it takes you guys. What's a radical? We went over it yesterday. Um, perfect square. Yeah. A perfect square? No. Well, yes, a lot. That, that's what I wanted to get at. A lot of you guys um, would call it a square root, and really in Algebra 1, we only deal with square roots, but what determines the root of a radical is the index. The index is that little, uh, imag well, for a square root, it's imaginary, it's that little number that goes in the corner, in the top left corner. And the reason why you don't see it in a square root is because what number is there? A two. So just so that you know, FYI, and, and, and we this term we won't this won't really come up because we're only going to deal with square roots. But for the record, in order to multiply radicals, those indexes need to be the same. Because we're only going to deal with square roots. You don't have anything to worry about. You would have something to worry about if you have your phone out, because then I would have to just come and hold on to it for you. I don't know if you know this, Xavier, but they call me the, the distraction killer on the streets. I have many names, that's just one of them. I have my own I have my own signs too. Next year I'm planning on getting a grill where on the top it'll say distraction, on the bottom it says killer. With an H. And then right before I take somebody's phone away, I just grill at them. Like, yeah. What? What? Of distractions. I only feel distractions. Something like that. Uh, allegedly. What's one of your signs? I can't show you them. I only flash it when I'm gonna feel distracted. Uh, yeah. So uh that, that extra rule that I told you that we have to learn, as opposed to yesterday, Nico, is just that when it comes time to multiply, that's what we're going to try to do first. The rule is uh, numbers that are on the inside get multiplied with numbers on the inside. Numbers on the outside get multiplied with numbers on the outside. Inside with inside, outside with outside. Well, but what, inside of what? I don't get it. Inside of the rabbit. <laughs> so then, um, the only thing that would possibly be left to do would be to simplify, but if you were paying attention yesterday, that should be a breeze. <laughs> so, uh, sorry if these came out a little bit light on your paper, but you can just darken them in. No, you're going to follow the rules as just 
it the same way I just told you to. So, can we agree that here we're multiplying it? And that we're multiplying two terms that each contain a radical? Yes. Yes, so yes. then Mr. Romero says what has to be true in order to multiply radicals? The indexes have to be the same. Okay. Uh, which you, you won't really have to worry about because we're only dealing with square roots. But that's just so you can run home and say, hey, mom, dad, I learned something. Look, when you multiply, the indexes have to be the same. <laughs> so now since the indexes are the same, Xavier, it's okay. Did you guys okay that she's dying? So look, she's, she's tough. She's got more. She's a fighter. What I'm going to do first is multiply. What were the rules for multiplying? What did I tell you is the only thing you have to be aware of? Yeah. So, um, outside with outside, the two numbers on the outside are 5 and 2. 2 times 5 is 10. On the inside, we have a 6 and a 27, which, uh... Once, no, the inside is a six and a twenty-seven. Oh. Outside with outside. Yeah, I did it. I did it. Inside with inside. Now, the only slight problem that you might run into is well, what tends to happen when you multiply integers with each other when you multiply numbers. Yeah, Isaac? You're just waving like... <laughs> it's a regal wave. Uh, here, let, let's do this now because we, we're wasting enough time anyways. Uh, the, the two of you guys switch. Yeah, I, I figure if I put you in the back of the room, you can't turn around anymore. Unless you, unless you want to like stare at the fog or something. Which really right now is probably better than what you're doing anyway, so can we just switch the two of you? I'll wait. <clears throat> so again, the only slight problem you might run into is what tends to happen when you multiply numbers. Come on, let's let's think like students think. What happens when you multiply numbers? A lot of times. Even my first period got this one right, so. What tends to happen when you multiply numbers? Yeah, the numbers get bigger. So that would be the only little obstacle that you might encounter. Because uh, Emma was talking about, <clears throat> well, now, oh, do we have to just simplify both radicals? Well, no, not by multiplying first, because we kind of consolidate and move everything under one radical. But now that one radical might have a bigger number than what you had previously. But that's not a big deal. We're not scared. Because Mr. Romero showed me how I can do it with my handy calculator. I doubt you can come up in the, on the, in the top of your head with 81. two numbers that go into 162. But I know it's even, so I can bring out a 2. And as Hope said, that doesn't give me 81. I know that 81 is no longer even, so when I try a 3, 3 does work 27. Bring out, this is just yesterday's, a repeat of yesterday. It's called a prime factorization. A prime factor, or, uh, aka a factor tree. A prime factorization of 162 is 1, 2, and 4, 3. Yes, sir. So now we got the 10 that was already on the outside, and that's going to be joined by a 2. And what groups do we need to get into in order to jump out of a square root? Pairs, yeah. So, pair, pair. So remember, we already had a 10 on the outside. That's going to be joined by how many threes also on the outside now? Yeah, not four, two. And 
and well got stuck on the inside. That's two. Ten times three times three is ninety square root of two. So on the top, this is just you know one of the, that was really I had to multiply radicals, but when I left it in simplest radical form. Ninety square root of two is simplest radical form. Yes, that's another way of doing it. But the problem I find with that, and and that's at, like when you work on um, I believe Khan Academy might even do it that way. And then like this week when you work on delta math, you know what she's saying is, hey, once I got down to eighty one, couldn't I just have done the square root of eighty one? Well, that, that requires students to know their perfect squares. In my experience, you might think it's really simple. Um, I'd say a majority of the students don't know their perfect squares, or at the very least can't recognize it at the drop of a hat like that. Yeah. So uh, if, if you can and you want to do it that way, that's fine. I just figure that for the masses, um, it's better off just because this at least gives you the aid of a calculator that tells you when to start or when to stop. But yeah. frankly, I, you know, whatever flows through your nose, I don't know. Any questions there? Yeah, Emma, uh, I mean, remember uh, where I'm coming from? I have, uh, like, this is not even a joke. I have students that can't tell me, like, what two times four is without a calculator. So. Yeah. No, no, times, times four. Mm hmm I don't believe it. Your times tables? Is he from Trickham? Yeah. Does he coach basketball? Yeah. I think I met him. Nice guy. Are, are you thinking of becoming an owl, Xavier? You're practicing? All right, so even though we have variables here, we, we worked with variables yesterday, we're not scared. Uh, the indexes have to be the same, but you don't really, you can almost overlook that because we're only going to be dealing with square roots. So what was the rule for multiplication? Oh, outside and inside. Yeah, thanks. So what's on the outside? Two times ten is Taiwan the chef. Thank you. Thanks, man. <laughs> On the inside, twelve times six is seventy-two. But then, who can remember from polynomials? What happens when you multiply the same variable? Add the exponents. Use your fingers. Three plus three is cancel. Once you can get this far, now now we jump in our time machine and go back 24 hours to yesterday, and we just know how to know how to simplify. Uh, you should be always, I mean, if, especially if you're not sure, just use the calculator to check. But when you put square root of 72 into a calculator, it gives you a decimal, so we need to do a tree. Well, I can tell that 72 is equal, so she's going to start off with a 2, which gives you 36. And like uh, Emma, if you know that 36 is a perfect square, and you just want to go, okay, cool, that just becomes a six, fine. But I, I just feel more people would be confused that way. So I would just continue until we get to a prime number. Two, two, nine. And since three is prime, that's how we were done. So if I were to rewrite the inside as a product of primes, I don't need to do it on the outside. There's no need for that. That's why it doesn't need to break free. So uh, 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3, x, 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 x. And now it's time for the matching game.
And uh, I can bring out a pair of twos, or then it'll just be one two. Uh, and it left behind one of its partners. I can bring out a three and three x's. On the outside, I have 20 times 2 times 3 x, x, x. On the inside, it's just 2. 20 times 2 times uh, 3. Story check out. Oh, yeah. Xavier, the next move is going to be to have Xavier Island all over in the back. I'm not going to hate, I'm just going to isolate. <laughs> So now we uh, continue to mix polynomials with radicals. I just have now two terms inside the parentheses. So in order to remove the parentheses, I just have to distribute, which is still multiplying. It's just multiplying more than once. You can just follow the rules each time. When I follow the rule the first time, both of those numbers are on the inside. On the outside, they're just ones. On one time, one is one. So... No, no number on the outside. On the inside, what's 5 times 15? Done. Then I'll just multiply again. Square root of 5 times negative 3. Occasionally, I'll, oh, yeah, that, that's not good. And occasionally, I'll have people say, oh, but those are not like terms. It doesn't have anything to do with like terms. It's just multiplying. Like terms is adding and subtracting. So let's just follow the rules. What does the square root of 5 have on the outside? A 1. That 3 is not inside a radical, so 1 times 3 is just 3. Now it's negative, so it'll be negative 3. And then on the inside is just a 5, so we keep uh, negative 3 square root. It's almost the same thing as if the square root was an x. If I were to tell you, hey, what is x times negative 3, what would you tell me? Negative 3x. Well, now this is just negative 3 times square root of 5. In many ways, the radical behaves like a variable. Soha, I see you thinking. Any questions? Well, because the five is inside of a square root and the three is not. When I multiply square root of 5 times negative 3. This 5 is underneath a radical. 3 is not. You can't, you, you said it yourself, you can't multiply an inside number with an outside number. Yeah. No, 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 no. I multiplied the 5 with the 15 because they're both on the inside, but I can't do it with the 5 and the 3. Well, okay, now this becomes a little bit of a gray area. Because I always have a little bit of a dilemma as to what do I teach first? Do I teach adding and subtracting first, or do I teach multiplying first? I like to teach multiplying first because it's the most similar to simplifying. Uh, but I've seen it both ways. Okay? But the point is that now that we've removed these parentheses, we still have subtraction. And that's what we're going to do tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to add and subtract. So you're going to have to just kind of uh, wait with bated breath until tomorrow. But I'll give you a little bit of a sneak peek. Um, the rules change a little bit. Okay, when it comes time to add and subtract, the radicals have to be the same. Like the not, not just the index, but like the number inside has to be the same. The same thing as variables. If this was like a, you know x minus three y, could you combine those? No. So the same thing. If the seventy five and the five don't match up, they can't be combined. But now what you can do, and what we haven't done yet, is check to make sure that the radicals are in simplest form. Can I do anything with the 5? Why not? It's prime already, so that's going to stay the same. But the 75 
Maybe I can do something with it. How many quarters are there in 75 cents? Three. So these are starting to look really much alike, but um, let's just concentrate. What's coming out of the um, out of the square root of five? What's staying on the inside? So even though these look the same, they're not the same because one one term has a three on the inside, the other one has a five. These cannot be subtracted. So just leave it. That's it. Tomorrow we, oh, even today a little bit, we get a little bit of subtraction. But. Yeah. Well, you can't. Because inside the parentheses, it's subtracting and adding, and the radicals are not the same. So, but we do have to... Yeah, we're still learning. Well, we still have to remove the parentheses. So, okay, let, let's, let's take what we learned from polynomials. How do you multiply two terms times two terms? It starts with full and ends with ill. Oh, cool. Foil. Now here, you're going to want to pay attention, maybe even write this down. Look at the first multiplication. You might just take like what Sol has said about inside, inside, outside, outside, and say, hey, Mr. Romero, that's square root of 36, because this times this is 36. And that's fine. That works. There's nothing wrong with that. But an easier way of remembering it is if you happen to be multiplying a square root times the same square root, it's like squaring it, because anything times itself is squaring, and a square makes a square root explode. So any square root times itself is just the number that was on the inside. But if you can't remember that, fine, then do it the long. Square root of 6 times square root of 6 is square root of 36. But what's the square root of 36? Just 6. Don't, don't leave the square root. You look confused by that, so uh, okay. Then now the next multiplication. Now we go back to the whole inside, inside, outside, outside thing. Both of those numbers are on the inside. You're allowed to multiply them. Positive times positive is positive. Square root of 18. Okay, so now we're done with the square root of 6. So now let's go with the next one. Negative times positive is negative. On the outside, we have a negative 2 and a 1, which is just negative 2. But on the inside, 3 times 6 is 18. And then finally, on the last one, this one is probably the most interesting one of all. Negative times positive is negative. On the outside, we still have a 2 and a 1. So that's still 2. But what's on the inside? They're both threes. So we just learned from the first one that when you multiply a square root times itself, you just get the number on the inside. Now you still have to multiply, but that just becomes a regular three as opposed to a square root of three. But wait, I don't get it. Okay, fine, just do it the long way. Then it would be, if you did it the long way, it would be two square root of nine. But what's the square root of nine? It's still three. Did I confuse anybody there? Yeah. Nope, never. That's when we add and subtract. That's tomorrow. 
tomorrow. That's tomorrow for multiplying. No. The only, what's the only thing that has to be the same for multiplying? No. It does start with in, but it ends with dex. Yeah, the index. That's the only thing that has to be the same. Yeah, occasionally some people, oh yeah, but like adding and subtracting is harder. No, it's not that someone says it's harder, it's different. So and now when you mix everything together, you have to know all the rules. All right, um, <coughs> excuse me. I, I can do the multiplication out there. Three times uh, negative two times three is negative six. And this is kind of where we're back in that gray area of, you know, I haven't officially introduced adding and subtracting. But especially considering that everybody here has taken Algebra 1 once before, maybe it won't be as steep of a learning curve. I just can't, I can't really avoid this. Um, unlike in the past, notice how Emma, both of these radicals are the same. I'm being asked to subtract. The, the 6 is canceled. 6 minus 6 is 0. They're gone. But I'm being asked to subtract. Are, are those two radicals the same? Yeah, they're both 18. So actually, those could be subtracted. Yeah. All right. You know, that's more tomorrow's lesson, but that's fine. We're not taking a physical Thursday anyway, so it's kind of a little bit of a blend. So what you'll learn tomorrow is when they are the same, keep the radical. That, that would stay the same, just like if they were variables. But you just combine the number in front. You don't subtract the number on the inside. You just keep the number inside the same. So you look like you're going to explode. Do a really bad thing. No, okay? What's in front of the first 18? A 1, what's in front of the next one? Negative 2, what's 1 minus 2? Negative 1, but I don't write the 1, it's not necessary when it's in front of something. I just need the negative. Am I done? No, because what's the one thing I haven't even tried to do yet? But at the very least, I've consolidated, I'm down to one radical, so... Mr. Romero, will you always get down to one radical? No, not necessarily. I mean, on the last one, we got stuck with two radicals, just as both of these are prime. But 18 is not prime. It's also not perfect. So you need to try a tree. 18 is a... The negative on the outside. And then 2, 3, and 3. I can bring out a 3 to join... The negative that was already outside, so this just becomes negative 3 square root of 2. Facts. Last one. This comes back to the one that we did on the, on the quiz. That might have confused you, but it's not going to confuse you anymore. When you square a number, what is that the same thing as doing? Multiplying by itself. So I can rewrite this as 3 square root of 11 plus square root of 7 times 3 square root of 11 plus square root of 7. And now I just foil like the last one. When I do the first multiplication, when I multiply the first the 3 square root of 11. Well, on the outside, you just multiply like you would anything else. 3 times 3 is 9. But now for the third time, tell you what happens when you multiply a square root times itself. Keep the number without the square root, so that would be 9 times 11. The first multiplication is done. The 9 came from the outside, the 11 came from the inside. But wait, Mr. Romero, isn't 11 times 11 121? You're right, it is. But then if you take the, the square root of 121, take a while, guess what you get? 11. Yeah, so that was that one. Huh? It's the same thing with 9? No, because the 3 was already on the outside. The 3 wasn't underneath the square root. It was already outside. So the whole point is like, you know, getting these numbers to break outside of the radical. The 3 was already there. Okay, 3 square root of 11 times square root of 7. The only numbers on the inside are the 7 and 11. Ha ha, 7 and 11. The 3 stays outside. It's the 7 and 7. When you multiply the same thing again, you still get the same thing. Plus 3 square root of 77. 7 times 11 on the inside. 
Then the last one, now for the fourth time, hopefully we've learned it by now. What is square root of 7 times square root of 7? Just 7. Nine times eleven is ninety-nine plus three square root of seven is seven plus three square root of seven is seven plus seven. Now this really becomes more of a thing for tomorrow, but okay, fine. We can just think of today and tomorrow as one big lesson. When we combine like terms, ninety-nine and seven. Those can be combined to give you 106. That's not new. Just adding numbers. But now with the radicals, can we agree that those are the same? They're both square root of 77. So we're allowed to keep that the same, and 3 plus 3 is 6 square root of 77. Now here's what you don't want to do, but I can guarantee you this is going to happen. People are going to go, oh, sweet, that's 112 square root of 77. Why not? Well, yeah, but basically that's exactly right because they're not like, you know, one has a radical, one doesn't. So that's going to stay like that. The only thing that you might be able to do, we haven't tried it yet, is can I simplify the 77? But when you do a tree with 77, it's just 7 and 11. It isn't prime. 77 is not prime, but I don't have those pairs. So I just leave it as is. So tomorrow we add and subtract, Thursday we quiz, and then we'd have had three other afternoons.